so this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof, it's Windows Pro time. Teleode chance. Now, this is the Surface Pro 7, and you may think, well, it looks exactly like the Surface Pro 6. Well, you're right, but I would say there are three major upgrades. Now, in this video, we're going to find out is it worth upgrading? Is this thing any good? It's fair to say I've slammed this thing, so I know how it performs. So, let's see for Microsoft's sake, is this the lucky number seven? So the Surface Pro 7 comes in at a good starting price. They are pretty good value for the quality build they are. They are premium quality, top draw fit and finish, premium materials. It does look a little bit dated compared to the Surface Pro X, which they have launched too, but don't buy that. That thing's like a Chromebook. That thing is only for email, you know, productivity, and maybe some light image editing and stuff like that. It cannot run X64 apps. You won't be able to game on it. So the Surface Pro 7 is a much better laptop in my opinion than the Surface Pro X. I will leave the latest prices down in the description so you can go check that out. But the specs of this model I have here, I got the i5 1035G4 processor. So that's Intel's latest 10th generation 10 nanometer processor with Iris Plus graphics and it is a G4. So it does get the good graphics. If you want the best graphics, you're gonna go to the i7. That has the G7 graphics, which is better. It's not a massive difference, but if you want the absolute best, get the i7. And I have eight gigabytes of RAM here, and that's LPDDR4X RAM. Now, when it comes to the RAM, here's the deal. This thing can pretty much do everything. Video edit, content creation. It can game a bit too. Yes, the AAA titles, you have to put really low settings, but it can game most games, particularly good with, you know, games that aren't super heavy, like, you know, Fortnite, CSGO, or Minecraft, casual game, Civilization. It's a superb machine for those sort of things but if you're wondering should you get 8 gig versus 16 gig i think the most important thing is you upgrade the ram rather than the cpu if you can get the 16 gigs get there because like if you've got the 8 gig and the i5 you can video edit but you'll be ram limited and some of the games it was ram limited as well so the ram is more important if you're not going to do video editing and you're just playing casual games you can get away with 8 gigs no problems as i said it looks the same as the last surface pro 6 you know it comes in at 775 grams 1.7 pounds 8.5 millimeters thick it is super light ultra portable of course i think it's best to get the keyboard which does add a little bit of weight and doesn't come with the keyboard doesn't come with a pen i'll leave a link in the description where you can get a pen that's you know just as good as the surface pen and it's much cheaper but on all those fronts, it's pretty much exactly the same, except for three major upgrades. The Ice Lake CPUs, which we've talked about, game changing, much better graphics, two times the graphics performance, and it is worth the upgrade for that alone. The CPUs are better, better IPC, better gaming performance, better video editing performance. I mean, you used to, on the Surface Pro 6, it would take me 40, 50 minutes to render out my project. Now, you'll be able to do it in under 20 minutes. If you've got the i7, you'll be able to do it in like 13 minutes. And with this i5 and eight gigs, it was around 20 minutes, but that was RAM limited. If I had more RAM, it would be quicker. So, you know, getting double the performance and more, with these processors especially when graphics is involved also have usb-c which also does power you can quick charge for usb-c you can also use it for display out it takes about an hour and a half to charge fully through usb-c with the fast charging about 37 minutes for about 57 percent battery so the fast charging is good of course you get the surface connector as well so you don't have to use usb-c if you yank the cord with the surface connector you're not going to damage your laptop it's great now that you can just plug any USB-C power into it. Now, I do wish it was Thunderbolt 3. It's not. I mean, it would be amazing if you could hook an eGPU up to this, but it is what it is. And then we have the other upgrade, which is Wi-Fi 6, which is a big deal going forward. It's better to have Wi-Fi 6 than not. So you get those three upgrades, CPU, GPU, USB-C, 
and Wi-Fi 6. Other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same as the last one, although the battery is a tiny bit smaller, and I was actually surprised with the battery life. It's pretty good. At maximum brightness, streaming YouTube content, 6 hours and 34 minutes. Maximum brightness, that's epic. 8 hours and 50 minutes at around 40% brightness. I got a 10-hour run when I lowered the display brightness to 25%. So, you know, what does that equate in sort of real world? You're going to be looking at in between, you know, 5 Five or seven hours depending on how demanding it is i mean if you're just watching movies you're going to get over eight hours battery life if you keep it under 50 percent brightness and even if you add it max again six hours and 34 minutes and maximum brightness that's pretty good it's not class leading by any stretch of the imagination but something so thin light and portable it's pretty good battery life the sound on it's pretty good you get an immersive feeling watching content on it got a gorgeous display you know the same display three by two of course you can use the pen with it it's the same like the last surface Pro 6, everything else is the same. For performance with this i5 and 8 gigs RAM, check out my gaming review so you can see that it can actually game. Even some AAA titles if you mess about with the settings. For performance video editing, content creation, I couldn't run any of the Puget System benchmarks because they're so demanding they need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. But even with the 8 gig and the i5, I could edit 4K video. The scrubbing was good. It could play back at full 4K content. But I suggest, you know, if you're doing 1080p content, get the i5 8 gigs, you can do that. But if you want to, you know, do 4K stuff, get 16 gigs. And the thing is, with the configurations, I think you can only get 16 gigs with the i7. So you've got to buy both. The i7 is faster, it's got the faster graphics. So if you can get there, get the 16 gigs and the i7. That being said, if you can get the 16 gigs, if they do make a skew with the 16 gigs and the i5, get that. I think that's best bang for buck. Also, the i5 is fanless, so there's no noise. Yes, it does get warm, but it doesn't overheat. It doesn't throttle below base clock either. It will sit around 18 watts under sustained load and even up to 25 watts under, you know, loads that aren't that long. It's got great performance. Although it may not look any different, those three upgrades I've talked about, they are game changing. It is worth the upgrade and it is the best sort of hybrid or tomb one. The only one that's sort of competing with this now is that XPS 13 that I'm going to review very soon. So make sure you subscribe to see that. That thing is amazing. And that has a 16 by 10 display and this one has a 3 by 2 display. So you get, you know, good real estate on them. The SSD inside, yeah, the read and write speeds are perfectly fine. It could be better, but um, yeah, all in all, it is the most refined, the best Surface Pro ever, without a doubt. I sh should be, it's the newest. Yeah, it'll be nice when they have a redesign and put Thunderbolt 3 on here. Other than that, it is like killer very good product and you're gonna love it i'll catch you next one tally ho